joining me in this video where I show you how to take an ordinary kitchen ingredient and make something extraordinary. My name is Marie Pelton and I'm an artist and I've been using food materials in my work for over 20 years. My husband and I have a company called JVMP Food Sculpture and we use materials like butter, cheese, chocolate, and fruits and vegetables to create life-size and sometimes over life-size pieces of art. Our website is jimvictormariepelton.com and if you go there you can see a whole gallery full of photographs of our work that we've done over the years. And I'll leave a link for that down below this video. Giving away our unique methods on how we use food and art is not something that we do all the time. Our experience and knowledge has ensured successful projects for us over and over. But some things are just too good and too simple to keep to yourself. Like the cinnamon clay recipe. I think that it's a really great jumping off point for inspiration and creativity. Especially if you're artsy, open-minded, and wanting to learn new methods and new materials to work with. And also, if you want to create art and you just don't know where to start, you can share this method with your friends and create something together. You'll see me in this video uh, creating the armature, creating the clay, the cinnamon clay recipe, um, as well as uh, modeling the clay onto the armature form and uh, creating the, the final features of my rooster. Um, but you can use this method and technique with any kind of figure or object that you want to create. I chose the rooster because I actually I like creating and sculpting animals. Um, and the color also reminded me of uh, some of the copper colors that I see in the feather pattern of the rooster. Um, I also experimented with uh, making a horse. And again, because I was inspired by the color. Um, the color reminds me of uh, a chestnut colored horse, um, which is the color of the horse that I ride at my friend Jessica's farm. Um, so, you know, you can uh, be inspired by the material in so many different ways. And remember that, you know, human creativity is a process of doing it and getting better. And you become a sculptor by sculpting, and you become an artist by creating. And there's no other way to do it. You do it, and you just do more of it. And we would love to see what you do. So uh, we're creating a community page on our website, and we would love to hear from you and to see the artwork that you create um, out of this cinnamon clay material. Uh, in the meanwhile, here is the video that I put together for you. And uh, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Thanks. So this is a list of six steps that I use to create this uh, cinnamon rooster. Um, and I'm not going to go over every single step, but you'll have that in your PDF file. One of the first uh, things that you need to do is pull some really good photographs off of the internet. And this was a really nice front view, which allowed me to see my subject, the rooster, from top all the way down to the bottom to its feet. This is a side view, and as you can see, a lot of animals are standing in the grass, and so you can actually see their feet. And so, but otherwise, this is a really good side view of my subject. Next, I'm going to take you to, through a little bit of the process of me creating the armature. Um, and I used uh, insulation foam that I got from the home uh, box stores. It's two inch insulation foam um, that I cut into some rec rectangles about the size of what I wanted to sculpt. And I sandwiched and glued those foam pieces together and drew just a little kind of a guide on the side. So when I started carving, um, I had a little bit of a starting point. And basically when you start carving, you know, you're going to lose that drawing. And that always happens because you're going to have to, well, well, I was getting the profile first. Um, and then after I get a basic profile, then I round out um, and really kind of carve into it, basically. Carve into it and getting more shapes and developing more forms. Um, and it gets a little bit smaller and smaller. So I'm going to let this run just a little bit more so that you can just observe. 
And I just want to describe a little bit some of the tools that you'll see me use. The one right here is a foam a heat knife. And, um, you know, I, I happen to have that because we work in the foam material from time to time. And in some of these faster time-lapse segments, um, you'll see me use these files. And uh, they are large size files. Actually, they're kind of horseshoeing files that work really well on the foam. Um, I think you can find them also at some uh, bigger industrial hardware places, maybe like Granger. So I'm going to let this run until we get to the end of it, until we get to the cinnamon dough part. And this is the section of the video where you see me uh, create the cinnamon clay. And I've just taken a large glass bowl and I've measured out my ingredients. It's one and a half cups of cinnamon and it's one cup of uh, applesauce and it's one quarter cup of the white glue. And you can mix that all together. I found that with my um, project that I actually made two batches. And um, it's good that I did that because I needed all of the material. Um, and this recipe is going to be available in the PDF uh, downloadable section. So you can print that out and have it. This mixture actually turned out just a little bit too grainy. And I'm not exactly sure why, but that's not a big problem because you just add a little more of the water. Just a little bit. Um, and then just till it kind of comes together like a cookie dough. And you can see me kneading that together. And that's a very important process. Um, so I started to knead it out and roll it out onto the surface, um, which is basically just kind of a laminate, smooth laminate surface. And I didn't want to roll it out too thin um, because actually it, uh, it stuck to the surface uh, of the wax paper when I rolled it out the first time and it was too thin. So I think I made it about one eighth of an inch or one quarter of an inch. And here I am pressing it onto my form and uh, it kind of came apart a little bit, but that's okay because you can just press it back together and it does come back together. So you just feather it out with your fingers, use your modeling tools, um, your clay modeling tools, and then you can really um, press that down firmly onto the foam armature. And once you start using the material, you'll really get a good feel for um, how it works. So you just have to keep at it and keep working the material until it's doing exactly what you want it to do. So I think I'm going to change angles here in a minute. So from this angle, you can actually see the, the legs of the rooster and how it's mounted into the board. Um, I just basically drilled little holes um, where the feet would go, where the legs would go into, and it's drilled at an angle. Um, so it was a little tricky kind of fitting them in, but um, you know, you can do that uh, very easily. And uh, the legs for my rooster are actually made of metal. Um, because I use metal a lot in the work that I do, but you could easily use wood dowels. Um, of course, size is always the issue. So at this particular scale, you know, um, for the rooster, I would say that my 
my metal rods, my pencil rod that I used was about one quarter of an inch. And so you would look for one quarter of an inch dowels, thick dowels. Um, so this was actually a lengthy process. You know, once I got started with the clay material, I kept at it and I, I kept working for a few hours um, because I did not want it to set up on me too quickly. Um, so, but, you know, if you do get to, a, when you do get to a point where, you know, you can, you can stop, then you can go back and add things onto it, which is what I did with the plume sort of on the tail. And I let the back side of the rooster kind of set up a little bit um, for a few hours, if not, I think overnight. Then I went back onto, um, you know, the rooster, rolled out some more dough and just created much larger feathers on the back side. So you can see sort of the shorter feathers right now and just drawing right into the material, creating more texture, very easy to do. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this material. And I can't see what, I can't wait to see what you do with it. <laughs>